OBS is one, if not, the most popular screen recording tool in the world today. One of the main reasons why it is so popular is, despite the full and rich features of OBS, it is still absolutely free. In this video, I am going to teach you how to get and install it, along with the basic functions that you can do with it. But before we start, let me just point out that based on my channel's analytics, more than 8 out of 10 people watching my videos are not subscribed to the channel. With that, may I ask everyone to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. I'm close to two years now of creating helpful and informative videos, but I haven't earned anything yet since I'm still short of 1,000 subscribers. Hopefully with your help, I can reach that 1,000 by this year. Thanks. Let's get started. Alright. We'll of course start with Google and search for OPS. You will see this open broadcaster software site, which is the meaning of OPS. Go to that site. As you can see, OPS can support Windows, Mac OS and Linux. The latest version is 27.1.3. You can read more information about OPS at the bottom of the page, if you want to. Since I am using Windows 11, let's click on the Windows button to download the Windows installer. After downloading, you can go to the installer file. It is 88.5 megabytes. Just run or open it to install. Installation is pretty much self-explanatory, so I won't be showing that anymore. Once installed, you will have an OBS icon created like this one. Let's open it. OK. So this is the screen of OBS. Let me start explaining the audio mixer section here, where you can set the audio input and output of your recording. You can see the progress bar, or the microphone slash auxiliary here moving since it is absorbing the outside sound and my voice, as I speak, via the laptop's microphone array. Let me play something here first which will produce a sound from the laptop. The video is playing now with sound. As you can see, the desktop audio progress bar is also active now, since OBS is also absorbing the sound coming from the desktop. Let me stop that video now. Now let me show you the properties of the desktop audio. Just click on the gear icon beside it and click on properties. From the device dropdown, you can select the source of the desktop audio. It is showing speakers since that is the only device in my laptop, but if you have a plugged-in headset, for example, you will be able to see that in this drop-down. Now let's go to the microphone and auxiliary properties. You will also be able to select a sound input device here. If you have a microphone plugged in, for example, you will be able to select it here. But since I don't have any, you'll just have the built-in microphone array here. If you want to mute the microphone, just click the sound icon here to toggle between mute and unmute. You can also do the same for the desktop audio. Just toggle them if you don't want your recording to capture the desktop audio or your microphone. Now let's go to the scene section here. By the first time you open OBS you will already have one scene here. The scene is the grouping of the sources section here. You can have multiple sources in one scene. If you click the plus icon here, it will let you choose the type of source that you want to add. Sources is the screen that you want to record. For example, you want to record your whole desktop screen, you can select Display Capture here. It will pop up a dialog box where you can rename the source. I leave that as is for now. Make sure that you check the Make the Source Visible here to make it visible after adding. Then you can click OK. There you go. The preview of what will be recorded will be here. The capture method can be changed here, but I suggest to leave it to automatic. The display dropdown will let you choose what monitor to record, that is, if you have multiple monitors set up. I only have one, so I'll also leave that as is. You can also choose to capture or not the mouse cursor during the recording. Let's click OK. We are now ready to capture Joel's screen. You can see here when I move the OBS window, the preview also moves since it is basically recording itself now. If you don't want to capture the desktop, you can hide it by click the eye icon beside it, which toggles its visibility on the recording. As mentioned earlier, we can have multiple sources. Let's try adding another one. This time let's do a Windows capture which will capture only a specific window. Let's click OK. We now have a window drop down here, where you can choose any window that is currently open. We have three choices here, since I have a PowerPoint window open here. And I also have Chrome window open here. So, those open windows will be available in the drop down. Let's try to capture the PowerPoint screen for this sample. Let's click OK. Now we have two sources in the sources section here. Let's add one more window capture. Let's rename this to Chrome so that we'll not be confused on the sources list content later. Click OK. Let's select the Chrome window this time. Again, you'll have option here to include the mouse cursor on the recording or not. And always check the client area. We now have three sources here. 
From here you'll have an option to hide some or all of them depending on what you want to show in the recording by toggling the eye icon. You can also rearrange them by dragging and dropping the item. The one placed at the top of the list is of course also the one that will be on the top of the screen of the recording. For example, you want the PowerPoint to be on top, just drag it to the top of the list. When we drag the display capture on top, then the PowerPoint window will be behind it. It's that easy to rearrange them. Alternatively, you can just hide the other sources and have the one you want to be record the only visible source. Remember that all of these sources are under just from one scene. You can add more scenes here by clicking the plus icon. Now we have a new scene with empty sources. Let's say in the scene, you want to present the content of your PowerPoint slide with your face at the bottom part of the screen just like a pro vlogger. Let's add source for the PowerPoint window first. There you go. I forgot to mention earlier, you also have a choice to resize this window. Just drag the points from the red border lines. Dragging it alone, or dragging it while holding the control key will resize it proportionally. Then you can also reposition it to center it to the screen. If you want to resize the screen freely, without locking the proportion, you can hold the shift key in the keyboard while resizing. I think I like it to fill the whole capture area without keeping the ratio here. Now, let's add another source which will be my web camera capture. To do that, select the video capture device. Click OK. There you go. This source is coming from my webcam. If you have multiple video capture device, you can select it from this device drop down. Let's click OK. After adding that source, we can now resize it. Let's put it in the bottom left corner of the screen. Now you have a professional looking presentation here. You can do the same setup for any vlogging needs like capturing your gameplay or doing a tutorial. Isn't this a great tool? So this is scene 2, and this is scene 1, the first batch of sources that we added earlier. Scene 2 is the vlogger type of scene. You can add more scenes here based on your needs. Now that our scenes are ready, we can start recording. To do that, just click on the start recording button here. It is now recording as you can see in the status bar below. You also have an option here to pause the recording by clicking the pause icon beside the button. See the status bar indicates it is paused now. You can click the pause icon again to continue recording. Let's now stop the recording. After stopping the video recording is immediately generated. To view it, just go to the file menu, then show recordings. This will take you to the folder where the recordings are saved. This is sorted descending by date, so the first file here should be the recording that we did. Let's open it. There you go. It's the exact recording that we did excluding the pause part of the recording. Now let me quickly show you the settings. Let me resize the window first so that we can view the settings properly. I'm not going to discuss these one by one, only the ones that I understand. We have the general options here, most of which are pretty self-explanatory. The stream tab lets you choose the streaming platform that you want to use. This setting corresponds to the streaming options here. Yes, you can use OBS to stream videos as well, but I haven't tried that yet. Let's go back to the settings. The output tab lets you choose the options for the recording video output. These are honestly too technical for me, and my general rule of thumb is, if I don't fully understand it, just leave its value to the default ones. We also have the audio settings here, which are also too technical for me, so I'm just leaving the values as is. Same with the video settings, and the most technical tab is the advanced setting. I'm just leaving them alone. For the hotkeys tab, this is very useful if you want to start the recording, while well, the OBS window is minimized, so that your recording will not always start with the OBS window being minimized. To set a hotkey, just click on any of the text boxes here, and press the hotkey that you want to set. For me, I have set Ctrl Alt Shift R keys for start recording, S for stop, P for pause, and U for unpause. These hotkeys works well, even when the OBS window is minimized, so I highly advise that you set a hotkey for the start, stop, pause and unpause functions. Alright. That's basically it for this video. If you have any other questions about using OBS, just shoot me a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer them. If this video helped you in any way, I'll appreciate it very much if you can hit that subscribe button for me. I'm targeting 1000 subscribers by the end of this year, please help me reach that goal. Nilasuj for watching. Naba Air.